<laughs> Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. I've written something for you. It's derived from ideas in the Lucifer Principle, my first book, and it applies to what's going on this week. Let's see if I can read it to you. Every society gives permission to hate. Hate is a bonding mechanism. It's a social glue. And who you hate defines your society. Russians in the Ukrainian crisis are being given permission to hate Americans. Americans are being given permission to hate Russians. Blacks in Ferguson, Missouri are using Michael Brown's shooting as permission to hate the white policeman who shot him, Darren Wilson. Whites are using the story that Brown beat Wilson into a daze and broke at least one bone in his face, his eye socket, to lay the blame on an intimidating six foot four inch, 292 pound black, Michael Brown. Meanwhile, in Iraq and Syria, Islamic State jihadists are following an extreme version of their religion that gives them permission to hate and kill Yazidis, Christians, Buddhists, and journalists like James Foley, the 40-year-old they beheaded on Tuesday, August 19, 2014. And Westerners, disturbed by the Islamic State's killing spree, are getting permission to hate the jihadists. Then there's another form of permission to hate, anti-Semitism. Some people are using another Mideast firestorm, the conflict in Gaza, to air out a 2,200-year-old hatred of Jews. And people like me, a Jew, are being offered permission to focus our dislike on anti-Semites. Righteous indignation is one of the most seductive drugs on the face of the earth. It comes when you feel you have a damned good reason to hate someone. And it produces a kind of high. What's more, righteous indignation is a bonding mechanism. It's a social glue. Righteous indignation pulls you together with others who agree with you. Tightly, it pulls you intimately together with them. And righteous indignation is another term for permission to hate. Look, we all feel utterly isolated, alone, and useless, sometimes as often as seven times a day. But when you're venting your anger, on someone that you are sure deserves it, you suddenly find that you are no longer alone and you are no longer meaningless. You are bathed in that heavenly state that 20th century Marxist revolutionaries, folks who used hatred and righteous indignation on a daily basis, called solidarity. You know why you are here on earth and you know that others welcome you. You feel powerful. And more important, you feel useful, useful to the course of history. Why are the blacks of Ferguson fighting for the right to hate police officer Darren Wilson? And why are many whites in America, like the folks in the Ku Klux Klan, fighting so hard to find evidence that would justify their hatred of a black, Michael Brown? Why are these whites fighting so hard that they've raised close to a quarter of a million dollars for Wilson's family? And why have blacks protested against white police brutality in places as far removed as Missouri and Staten Island, New York? Blacks and whites are fighting for the right to indulge in the drug of righteous anger. They are fighting for the right to be part of a group that gives a meaning to their life. They are fighting for the, to brotherhood and camaraderie. They are fighting for the juice of social glue. And they are fighting for the right of their group to be on top 
of the social heap. They are fighting for their group's right to be top dog and to exult in that fact. They are fighting for truth and justice, but they are fighting for more than just truth and justice. They are fighting for the permission to hate. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future that it's your job and my job to make or want to know why. Ask how. And now for that sleazy, sneaky, absolutely unfindable little off button. I've got it.